So tell us about um, post-op. Do you, uh, one, have a protocol or anything like that? Um, and two, are we doing Q1 flap checks the first uh, 24 hours still, then Q2? Like, is that still happening? And then, uh, you know, what are some signs? Do you have like an algorithm if somebody is concerned for whether it's venous congestion versus a throm- you know, an arterial problem? Yeah, we've got a protocol. Um, we just revised it, actually. It's now 24 pages, uh, 25 <laughs> pages long. We don't have to go through all 24 <laughs> five pages. <laughs> Good, because it takes an hour and a half. I did that yesterday. Uh, but, I mean, most of it is actually, you know, we're trying to create a document that's both kind of tells people what happens on each day, post-operative day, and, you know, things to look out for when preparing for a case and pre-op preparations and things like that, but then also like filling in the rationale behind different things and, you know, all kinds of stuff like who might be appropriate to decannulate and how you decide if somebody is maybe ready to start PO intake or capping their trach or whatever. So there's just a lot of like kind of background information in there too. It's not all just like day to day do this at this point in time. But as far as flap checks, we'll do, we do Q1 hours for almost 72 hours. So we have them go to the ICU. We don't have a intermediate or a step down unit, unfortunately. So Q1 hour checks can't be done on the floor. They can do Q4 hour, I, th- I believe is the most frequent checks that they can do. So and they being like nursing, right? Like it's a nursing doing correct. The checks. It's a nursing, nursing order. Yeah. Nurses can't, you know, because of the number of patients they have, they're restricted by the frequency of different orders that can be carried out on patients, you know, on the floor relative to the ICU. So ICU can do Q1 hour nursing flap checks. And so that's what we do. What does that entail, Eli? Like, or is that just them Dopplering the stitch or, you know, what are you asking? They document do? the color, the warmth. Everything. So they, you know, as long as it's visible, then, then flap check entails like looking at the flap. Does the color look normal? It should just look like normal, healthy skin, right? So unfortunately, a lot of times the flap is more pale than the surrounding tissue, especially when it's coming from the leg and it's going to the face um, or the thigh, you know, is pretty pale relative to the face. So it's always going to look pale relative to the surrounding tissue, but um, it's really more a change th- than anything else. So whether it looks pale, extra pale, whether it starts looking purple, which might be a sign of congestion. Uh, edema, like I mentioned, is pretty normal and, and flaps, especially perforator-based flaps. They tend to get pretty edematous slowly over the course of the first three days. And that's kind of the peak, I, I think, is around day three. And then it starts slowly tapering off again. But like a sudden change in in flap edema or swelling that might signify hematoma under the flap or hematoma in the neck or wherever else and uh, the temperature is not the easiest thing to assess. A lot of time the flap does feel more cool relative to the surrounding skin, but you know, you palpate it, you feel the temperature, you feel the general kind of turgor or, or just how tight uh, it feels. It, again, should feel pretty normal, but it does get swollen. And then the Doppler check and um, usually we have some degree of like donor site extremity checks too. So just doing the same thing with the hand, if it's a forearm, just look at the hand and uh, especially thumb and forefinger, which are the distal most in the circulation. If you're getting your circulation from your ulnar artery now and you have no radial artery, making sure that the cap refill and sensation and motor are all intact on the donor site. And there's no evidence of compartment syndrome developing. And then if there's any concern, then they call our resident team and then the residents would assess. And if they agree that there's some something questionable on the flap check, then the next step is to to scratch it or, or stick it with a needle, uh, depending on your preference. Usually I take a scalpel and just make like a tiny little like paper cut depth kind of thing just through the epidermis and, and barely into the dermis. So not anything that Um, needs to be sutured up, but just like a little, literally like it looks like a paper cut. And I just find that easier to ascertain whether or not there's blood return than if you stick it with a little needle. And so then you, you look at the blood and if it's not bleeding, then obviously that's concerning for ischemia. If it's bleeding real dark red blood that comes out extremely quickly, then that's concerning for venous congestion because you have backflow of blood into the flap. And then there's everything in between, which is usually where it is. And then you're trying to figure out what you should do yeah. at that point. 